this is my fucking favorite. I've been, I, look, man. I I, I've been, I've been like fucking so mad about this for weeks now. So now that you're here, I have to, I have to take it out on on yeah. Fanatic. Okay, so let me set this up for you guys. If if you haven't heard my rant on this before, okay. all right. So Misfits and Fanatic play each other. It's a very important match to not have a tiebreaker uh, for Fanatic. And, and Misfits, right? So if Misfits wins, you guys actually just go. So Fnatic has to win this, basically. Okay, so we're setting the stage. Uh, otherwise, Misfits is going to get the higher seed. If Misfits wins, then they don't have to play the tiebreaker, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, what happens is Fnatic decides to ban. They are on red side. Uh, Poppy, Akali, and Yumi. And I'm sitting here going like, yes, please do, th please do these things. This is fantastic. Uh, Fnatic... Ends up, it, you know, it's still a pretty close game overall. Uh, goes like 30, 30, over 35 minutes. Fnatic wins the game. All right, this sets up the tiebreaker. Now, they're going to play the tiebreaker. Teams are on the exact same sides. Fnatic won. Their next ban is Gwen Jarvin Siver. Now, keep in mind, these games happened on the fucking same day. There have been no other games of Misfits to make you believe that they will be playing the Gwen, Jarvan, or Sivir, or that these are indeed their priorities. Misfits proceeds to get Silas, Yumi, Poppy, Aphelios, and Nar, which is like Misfits Exodia. And I'm just like, and then you just completely slam Fnatic in this game, end up not being in the loser's bracket. And hilariously, now we can talk about the effect of this, which is Fnatic plays again three red side games against you. So you have now five consecutive red side games versus Fnatic. They come back in the playoffs and they ban Silas, Yumi, and Lulu, which obviously with meta shifts makes a lot of sense. Like still, you know, they let you have the Akali, but they beat it in the first game. But you can see like, I still don't understand what Fnatic was fucking doing in this tiebreaker and why they let you, like you must've been overjoyed to see their sudden like pivot in this ban phase. Like, what do you think they were thinking? I think since like we, we made adjustments and we like, we're like, okay, let's not play against upset Seri again. So then they didn't have as high priority on Severe, and maybe they weren't playing it at the time, so they responded by banning Severe. Um, and then, in theory, like you have less champs to play with Yumi, uh, but they ended up playing Ezreal, so then we just can play Yumi into it for free, and I think they didn't expect that to happen. And like for their second ban of Jarvin, like I don't have any, any, I don't know what went on there because like we we're, we're just gonna pick Poppy anyway if Poppy's open. So like that one doesn't make sense to me. I, but I can understand why the the Yumi was open in a bit because like usually Aphelios and Yumi don't get paired together. It was just because sure. they had Ezreal. Yeah. Oh man, that Jarvan I mean, they ban played, is they played that... Ezreal Pike into you too, which was also low key hilarious. Yeah. That's also why the key detail Monty has is that it was the same day though. It wasn't like it was like yeah, a different yeah. day because it, here's the thing: I could understand if they just played a load of scrims and some other team had Jarvan all the time, like Yankos or something. Yeah, that makes sense. Or Balrang or something. Yeah, these guys would pick it. But like that ban yeah. was like, what team are you banning against? He wasn't ever picking that. I was like, do you think it's rogue? Like I, I was like, I, I like looked at that ban. I was like. It, do they think they're playing yes. rogue right now? <laughs> like, I wonder what is going on. <laughs> it's like we play. We only prepared uh, one game plan, uh, uh, and uh, just in case we faced accidentally faced rogue through some series of random tiebreakers. We're, we're rolling with it, guys. We're rolling with the draft. <laughs> it was uh, I, anyway. So it was quite funny. But like, I really felt that Fnatic like had a very good read on you guys in the in the first match they played, and it seems like they basically ran that read back um on you in the playoffs as well which clearly you must have been expecting but uh, i think one of the the narratives that we also have to talk about is like fanatics pretty rapid turnaround and part of this is going to be that on paper this was always a good roster and like very strong on a player by player basis and it was really the the lack of synergy or player underperformance that was fucking this team up and there's always the possibility. I mean, we said it a lot with Vitality. If Vitality suddenly just decides to have synergy, then they're going to be a really good team. And it feels like Fnatic has now 
the meta has helped, admittedly, and Razork performing really well has helped, but they've clicked into form. Upset has been good the entire split, and now he can really dominate on a lot of these late-game AD carries, so it feels like a good meta for Fnatic as well. When you were preparing for them in your match, what did you think were their strengths, and like, how were you trying to exploit them? Um, well, it was, it was difficult to, to prepare for them because like in, in terms of the pick ban, uh, because like one humanoid's best champion as year, we, we couldn't take it away from them and we didn't really want to, to play against that. And then we like shared champion pools with Razork in a way, like right now Razork if you check his match history, he played like I think fifteen games of Trundle and Poppy in a row. Um, so we kind of like wanted the junglers to be open and and just be fine to trade. And then at the same time, we also needed to to take away upsets champions. So we wanted to like first pick Zeri um, to take upsets best champion, in my opinion, away from him. So. That was kind of the plan. We would um, ban Lucian uh, as well, so they couldn't respond with that first pick area away from upset. We By the way, is the implication there that like in scrims were they really good on the Lucian army or something? What was the yeah, reason they, why he was a fox in the Lucian so much? They they um they were good with Lucian army, and also if like Yumi and Lulu are banned, then our answers into Lucian army. We're not that good, but right. now, mm. now I see in hindsight, like from the the Matt series, that it's it looks like they wouldn't ban Yumi and Lulu if Lucian wasn't banned, and right. they would be fine to play that. So right. I think if I was to go back, I would I would change that and and leave Lucian open. And I know that they're really good at, at yeah. Lucian. And for, for context, guys, about what he's talking about, in the next series Fnatic played, they would leave on they played a bunch of red side games again. They would pick Lucian Nami on red side, and then they would leave Yumi up, and it was like Yumi Neela, Yumi Siver that were getting played by Mad Lions. So just so you under I just want to contextualize it for you. Continue. Yeah, yeah. So like maybe that wouldn't be the case against us because we really love to play Yumi and, and Lulu, especially like in scrims against them the the week before uh we we played this a lot um so maybe that wouldn't happen but if we did that that same trade i think that would have been been better for us and then like in the first game i think they took us by surprise a bit like with with um playing Callista renata uh with like their their two bands that they did and then they got like a really, really good early game, uh, which we we probably could have avoided. But after the early game, um, it was it was rough. And then we tried to adjust, take out Callista, um, and still play the Zeri. Uh, and we we had an answer to to Renata uh, with with Soraka. Um, and like we had really that game. In... Like he was super yeah. powered in that game, wasn't he? He was going fucking. Yeah. He always doing mad work. Yeah. Yeah, we we I think we had that game in the bag. Uh we had the Infernal Soul. We had Orn with five upgrades. It just wasn't meant to be. Uh they played really well and then um yeah, in the in the third game, um I can't remember the exact draft. Oh, okay. Now now we had to yeah, take away the poppy. Yeah, and we we played like scaling champions and um tried to like fall back on on our identity again like play yeah, Corky yeah. Sivir on, and we took the poppy away from them because Razok was playing really well. So we shifted our priorities. Uh, just didn't work out, and like this playoffs, um, especially like in the the series against us and against Mad, like Razork. Actually, Razork was amazing in XL series as well. But Razork and and Upset, I think they've like taken their game to another level and I know Upset was already really good in the regular season but I don't think he was as good as he's playing right now which yeah. is like just out outstanding Want to see more cool, funny interesting clips based on topics from my content? Well, subscribe to this channel then or you know, be a pleb and don't